she know I got a girl, but she don't give a fuck. She know I got power, and I'm in a sucker. I ate your average motherfucker, rockin' a Mary trucker. Foreign car, she's beige color. Off white, look like I hit a same homie. Me and Tom smoking back to back, we them pain brodies. T.O. finna come home, so you know we finna make it rain on them. Shit ain't no gang, homie. Gang blows brain from my ass for top. Now she giving brain from me. Kicked her off the whip, she brought the train, homie. I'm insane. Smoking backwards to try to ease this pain. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Ready? All right, let's get it going. You already know we back at it like a crack at it. Y'all know the slogan, Smalls and Money, King Cash. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I got a nice special guest to the right of me. Please introduce yourself, Ms. Chef D. Hi, Chef, D- Chef Denise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How are you? Giving the full government. Denise. I got a nice little chef next to me. She cooking up, and we going to cook something up today on Smalls and Money. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Do all that like y'all been doing. Keep checking out the segment, Breaking the Black Barrier. And we got a new segment coming up real soon. But today, we're going to chime in. So like I said, we about to be cooking up some good conversation there. You know we love building on home. We love building on morals and money. And we love promoting people's business. So that's why I got Miss Chef Denise here today. Please tell us your business name. Mm-hmm. My business name is Deliciosas. Deliciosa? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's my... Um... It's my initials. Uh-huh. We're delicious. So Please tell us the delicious. background. Like, give us the background on why you picked that name. Um. All right. So initially, I was choosing an Instagram name. Oh. Initially, I was choosing an Instagram name with my friend. Um. It was just us going back and forth. Just simple Instagram name. Mm-hmm. But then I decided I wanted to embark on my catering business. So I'm like, this could be a good name for the catering business. It's, it's like a triple entendre. It's mm-hmm. my name. The food is delicious. Mm-hmm. Everything delicious. <laughs> of course. You remember the, uh, what, what movie was it? Uh, Roll Bounce? Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, not even Roll Bounce. It was, um, what movie was Megan Good and then her name was Delicious? I don't remember, no. You don't remember that movie? <laughs> no. She was like Delicious with an extra. Mm-hmm. You feel me? <laughs> but nah, you just reminded me of that. What inspired you to start a catering business? Like what inspired you to, of course, cook for everybody? Um, I've been cooking for a long time. I got my food handlers. I went to culinary school and mm-hmm. I got my food handlers back in like 2016. Okay. Um, but I was working in the kitchen for a long time, working in, um, either fast food or fine dining, but it isn't much of a difference. So it's, cooking has always been your passion. Yeah. So cooking has always been my like passion. Like young. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. always been my passion. But um, I was always so focused on I want a food truck and stuff like that. But it's like I wanted to start small and the catering business is perfect. Okay, okay. So can you describe your vision on your culinary experience since you went to culinary school? Um, My vision and my culinary experience. Um, I want to see myself being able to cook plates that are healthy, but I want to be able to... Give protein, you know, because right now if you see me wipe my head. It's because I'm sweating, gay. <laughs> it's hot in here. It's hot as a motherfucker. <laughs> I'm always sweating, but not to cut you off. Keep on. It's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cook um good proteins. Make good healthy foods. Because mm-hmm. right now everything is, everybody's focused on their health, and that's a good thing. So. Yeah. What um, what's your specialty? Um, Dominican food. So. Dominican food. Yeah, being... Is that your heritage background? Yeah, I'm Dominican. Okay. So, um, Latin food, Caribbean food. Mm-hmm. So, I do try to make it a little bit more healthy because we do cook a lot of oils, a lot of seasoning. Mm-hmm. So, try to Give make my season... Give diabetes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With that salt, that gout. <laughs> so, try to make your seasonings healthy instead of, you know, using processed foods or processed mm-hmm. um, ingredients, you know. Do you know about other cooking oils and things like that? Like, what type of cooking oils do you use? I usually use canola or can- or um, coconut. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I know that. Or avocado using, oil as well. Yeah, yeah. using mm-hmm. those type of oils are definitely good and more healthier yes. and will lower the cholesterol. Even though some, you know, having mm-hmm. cholesterol is kind of good, but you don't want to have high cholesterol, cause diabetes and stuff like that. Yeah, or, or even cooking. learning 
how to cook without oil, you mm-hmm. know, learning okay. how to cook in the oven, learning how to cook with water. Okay, you know? but give me that spiel about that. I don't know about I that. I mean, please huh? give us some more info as you just mm-hmm. were saying, cooking water based or cooking more in the oven. Um, yeah, like you don't always need oil to cook, and even if you're gonna use a little oil, it might just you know base. You no, know, it's melanated pan, people. We to... love fried food. Of course, you know, but it's not healthy. It's right. not good for you. Tell us some more healthy tips, please. Um, what so that yeah. You know? You could just use. well, I use my oven a lot. Mm-hmm. I use my oven a lot. I pan sear a lot of food. I don't really, you know, use a lot of oil. I don't fry a lot of food. Okay. So, like for myself. You so, know. what do you think is the? How do you differentiate your your menus while you're catering for people? How do you? What, what's the difference between picking you and picking somebody else? Um, I would say I give an experience, a quality experience. I try to, you know, mm-hmm. um serve my customers or my clients and um my my <laughs> I'm sorry I try to serve my clients in the best way I can you know mm-hmm. this is it's hard in the kitchen and it's hard you know dealing with people period what do you think your struggles are like how long have you been catering matter of fact I've been catering well I worked for a catering company mm-hmm. I worked for a staffing agency that used to send me out to caterings for from a hundred to up to a thousand people, mm. so it, I was doing that for a few years, and it was nice. It was great, but then I tried to embark on my own this year, started in January. Okay, that's what's yeah. up. And what struggles have you had so far? Struggles that I've had so in. far is um, my kitchen. I've been <laughs> I've been renovating for the last like month, mm-hmm. and it's just been hard getting the setting together so I can just like get started. Right. Yeah. Would that be on Getting the equipment or how no, not getting the equipment. Mostly, it's just like just getting everything done. Right. Nah, just getting everything done. You know, getting the um, mostly infrastructure. People mm-hmm. to come in and just like get stuff done for you. You know, you have to rely on other people, painters and people to put in your counters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a, forever, okay. and yeah, stuff like that. So as you embark on your your first endeavor of, of your catering business and. and Becoming the first entrepreneur, are you the first entrepreneur in your family? Um, no, I'm not. Okay. Um, I was inspired by my dad. Okay. My dad was a pawn shop owner, a pawn shop owner. So he owned a jewelry shop. And That's good. Yeah. So was, you already kind of got like an outlook or a perception. On I was how a kid, you know. Yeah, I was a kid when I was like around that, mm-hmm. but um, it was good to see. It was good to see that it is possible. To, mm-hmm. Like my dad doesn't come from. America, you okay. know, he, so he's an immigrant that you came will be over first here. Generation. In, or second? Second, yeah. No, no, no. First generation, yeah. yeah first, generation. first generation. Yeah, that's first born generation here. Yeah, definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. First generation that born here, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so both of your parents is from Yeah, from both of my DR? parents are from DR, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So as a first generation American, first generation Dominican American mm-hmm. here, and are you from the Bronx? I am from the Bronx. Well, yeah, I was born here. Okay, born mm-hmm. and raised in the Bronx? No, I was born, I was raised in the Heights okay. for a little while, and then I came over to the Bronx. So, like I was saying, like my question I was going to ask, mm-hmm. with you being a first generation Dominican American, what is your perception of working hard and trying to be an entrepreneur or just work, being a nine to five type of worker? Um, I believe, what do you mean, like the difference? Yeah, like, like what, what was your perception growing up? Should I become a Should a I become an entrepreneur person? or should a nine to five? a strong businesswoman or should I just fall in line and be an entrepreneur, I mean, be a nine to five employee. I mean, seeing that, um, cause I, I saw both worlds. My mm-hmm. mom was a nine to five worker. Mm-hmm. My mom worked for Montes- Mont- Montefiore. Okay. And my dad was an entrepreneur from first he did taxi driving until, you know, he got his business. Right. So when I saw that, it's just like, you know, what do you do? Then I got to see <laughs> both, um, Sides of the story too, because then I grew into working. I didn't become an entrepreneur until now. Mm-hmm. I didn't start working to myself for myself till now. Right. I didn't take that. That, that leap of faith. Yeah, that leap of faith. I didn't take that. What that, gave you that 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 assurance to do it though? Like, um, just believing in yourself. It's about that time. Mm-hmm. It's about that time. You are working in the kitchen. You're not really, you know, getting to where you would see yourself mm-hmm. in the kitchen. Right. So. Yeah, you they working say, for a company for three years, and it's like, oh, I could, but could have been building my business for three years. It's, 
And being in, like you said, you went to culinary school. What, what year you graduated culinary school? 2016. 2016. So from 2016 to now, you've been working in kitchens, doing things like that. So how how hard is it to do things like that? Because I was just watching a movie called Chef, right? Mm -hmm. It was, came out, I guess, a couple years ago. I never seen it. It was my first time watching. But I see, like, it's really stressful. It's competitive. To be a head chef. It's competitive. And then you it's, got sous chefs. Yes. And then, uh, I bet. What's under that? What's um, under so it's executive, sue, and then it's cooks. Uh -huh. Yeah, just first cook, second cook. But and if you, you got your preps, chef and you a cook, how like how hard is that to be? Like, um, it takes years. Yeah, right. it takes yeah, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes mm -hmm. uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I started as a prep cook. Well, uh, I started training. Yeah, took, please give us your, your journey. So when I went to culinary school, they make you do um, an internship. Mm -hmm. So you're working for free. And I did a few of those so I can get my credits to finish school. And from there, I found a really good job on my catch. Okay. I was prepping at catch. And that was nice. Mm -hmm. You get to learn how fancy to... Fancy restaurant. Fancy restaurant. And they was, they, at that time, this was, what, 2016? I was going to pay them 1150 Okay. <laughs> it was crazy. 1150 $11 No tips? With the, like... Of course not. It's the kitchen. You get tips on the floor. Okay. Yeah. So that I'll explain. Um, so when in the kitchen, you, you have to prove yourself a lot. So when you're a hard worker and they see that you can knock stuff out right mm -hmm. away, no complaining, getting, getting work done, you move up fast. Yeah. But for women in the kitchen, it's hard to move up fast, but you, you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with being a chef and then like, if you was a head chef and you had, you was working at a high-end restaurant like like catch or, or book and shop house would you think you would have your own creativity with the menu or are you just going by what oh no honey i was i was just prep literally prep is um they make you prepare everything for the cooks so the cooks it, well, have saying, the like, you think the chefs had their own creativity I, I feel so probably yeah they would probably like throw stuff on the menu that chefs would um recommend mm -hmm. yeah but as a prep cook they would just throw you in and you have to cut and peel 40 pounds of potatoes, cook this rice and do this and send that up for the line cooks to throw it all. Yeah. And for, for you, like you said, for you to move up, that's years. Yeah, not years. I would say like, you know, just time. It's time and effort. I would say years, but yeah. So you say you do a nine to five. What else do you do for yourself? Like, how do you fund being a caterer um I'm, from my nine to five i have a security license i okay. just i just obtained my security license this year That's just so i could have a little bit more leeway working security is a little more less stressful i would mm -hmm. say um yeah i do security over the week from tm <laughs> yeah so other questions i got for you one how do you see your business how do you feel like how do you see yourself scaling your business in the next five years? How do I see myself scaling my business? Mm -hmm. um, I see that social media is like a big help. So I have to work a lot on content, work a lot on, you know, recording what I do. Because yeah. I definitely do try to, but it's hard. Um, cutting my potatoes and getting my camera in the right direction mm -hmm. and doing this. So I would have to like, you know, um, work on that, you know? You gotta do more reels and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'll be seeing people do reels. Mm -hmm. I wanna get one of those little cameras thing. that you could just like hang, oh, oh no, the tripods that you can like hang from your neck. I saw one of those on Amazon. Oh, wow. It's for us cooks. <laughs> so, as you're saying, uh, marketing, promoting, and catering. Yes. Business, how do you plan on identifying and reaching your target market other than social media? Like, do you, you feel me, how many catering events have you had so far so i just came from miami in march okay. well april okay um and dedicated catering event out there i worked with uh um airbnb stays place they call tila stays okay and they were they very... your, your um flight and all that no 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 that was all me okay. that was all me yeah um we you know we worked on a collaboration on a bridal event and it was beautiful it came out to um beautiful outcome it was really nice it was about 20 people. Very nice. So somebody wanted to book you right now. What, what was your price? What, what's your 
What's your price? I mean, it all depends on a quote, you know? Like, you would just let me know. What type what, of event it is? Yeah, what type of event, how many people, what are you trying to serve, what kind of foods do you want to have? Because I'm not going to charge you the same thing for chicken that I am for a steak or the mm-hmm. same thing for, you know? So, yeah, I have to, it's never a set price. It's always off quotes. Okay. Well, you, know, you say you your just, specialty is Dominican food, but can you do everything? I mean, like, yeah, I work off recipes. You know, I've been doing this for a little while. Mm-hmm. Well, I was saucier for a long time, so... I love making soups. I love making sauces. So I pasta is my thing. So we could try to Next time, I got you. <laughs> Bring a little slot or something. A little something, something. Got you. So how how do you feel like catering in New York is the best thing? Or you should be branching out and getting out of New York City? Because we know New York City has fluctuated with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business people. Yes, this is the financial market of the world. Y'all know that. But... It is very expensive to be here right now. You know what's going on with the political race we're going to have soon. I always say I want to move to DR because this is crazy. (laughs) I mean, I was just in DR and and DR got some real... Did you like it? I I ain't going to lie. That was one of the best trips I've had. That's mad peaceful. (laughs) That's crazy. One of the best trips. What part did you go? They got mad different fruits that I've never seen before. What fruits did you try? Damn near everything. Shit. I tried some... um, you won't have me on the spot and I can't remember shit. Is it like orange inside with like a big um, the, um, seed? One of those. And then it was like some uh, pomegranate grapefruit type shit. Pomegranate um, grapefruit. Matter of fact, no. What was it? It was some shit. It's yellow seeds inside. Mm, okay, okay, okay. I know they had the best watermelon because we ain't got no good watermelon right now. So, I just had know, watermelon today. It was so bad. You know I was busting down the watermelon. So. <laughs> For real. Going crazy. <laughs> oh, rip. You know we need that. We yeah. need that. What part of the yard you went to? I went to Punta Cana. Punta Cana? Yeah. Tourist. That was my mm. first time, of course. Okay. Maybe I might go, you know, outskirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe some, you got to go with time. me one day. I got you. Ah, right, you got to stay with the locals, you know? You Save you to me. the hood. Bro, what? Yeah, it's going to be fun. Don't worry. I don't know Spanish. They're going to try to rob me. No, 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 no. You with me. And then I know people that know English, too. It's okay. All right. We got people that, you know, they out there no, living now. You are going to get home. With me, you are always going to get home. Right, say that. Say that. <laughs> right, just remember, she said that on camera. On right, camera, we got this recorded. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But, like I said, in the next, what do you see, like, so you other than moving to, to DR, you feel me? Do you really feel like you want to do that? Yeah, that's the that's the end game. But what you going to do here for the catering? Man? I mean, like, when... You want to be a chef out there? You see yourself having a restaurant? Of course, I see myself having a having a business where I can like give like, people what's jobs. Your biggest, what's your you bigger know? dream other than yeah, yeah? At least your says right now. from here to ten years might be a business where I could give people jobs, so where I don't I'm have sure. to be the chef. I'm you know, sure. where I could okay. have a a whole book of recipes, and mm-hmm. they could just go off my recipes and. And cook for my clients. Okay, okay. That would hopefully be, you know, something beautiful that do you could have, there. Uh, and then I could go to the yard and just, you know, you can come visit out there. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> you're gonna make all of the mango and arroz right. con pollo. Definitely. Yeah, mango for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. But arroz con pollo. Why not? I don't like. I don't like the name. Not even the sweet ones. We'll make it yuca. No. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we're gonna figure something out. Okay. But do you, what are your top five? Do you have a top five favorite chefs? Because I know everybody that loves, like, been to catering school, love cooking like yourself, has a couple chefs that they love. You feel Man, like Gordon Ramsay, you know? I mean, I could, my, I could say top chefs are chefs that I've worked with. I can't, I can't tell you about chefs that I've seen on TV. Yeah, I could say, oh, I like this chef, I like this chef. But Gordon, of course, like, I love his work, but... I hate how how he screams. Now you see that a lot in the kitchen. And so there's nobody that influenced you as a, as a chef. Of course, or? people that I've worked with. You know, oh, people, okay. chefs that I've worked with. Um, when I was in, all right. So before culinary school, when I was in the Dominican Republic, I went to school for tourism. Okay. Um, so tourism, they embark on hospitality, mm-hmm. culinary, and bartending. So you can see where I stood right there mm-hmm. in my culinary. I like hospitality as well. They was teaching you how to work in hotels and stuff, yeah. but that's not really people where. I, person. Yeah, I'm I'm a great people person. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I'm it's a lot dealing with hotels. Yeah, yeah. Um, and bar as well. The drinking is just like, eh. 
let's let's stick with the cooking. So okay. I did the cooking thing, and I met this very nice um, and dedicated lady. That um, she was the coordinator to my sweet fifteen, and I was just always liked her style. And she was just like very like on point and knew her shit. And it was like, oh, can I curse? Yeah. yeah okay. Definitely. Sorry. YouTube uh, only censor us when we talk about. Shit that they, you know, okay. hate for niggas to talk about. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so, yeah. Um, What was I saying? Sorry. You was talking about who inspired you. Oh, yeah. Said so, she was, good, like. she was, like, good in her shit. And mm-hmm. I was just, like, she was beautiful. Short haircut, just like me. Okay. <laughs> and so, oh, so she inspired you a lot. And did hello. You have a short no, I had long hair. I was 15 years old. Okay. So, I'm like, hello. She inspired Big me. influence. And I just thought about that right now. <laughs> See? You got to remember who yeah, really, who really who influences really you in the game. Yeah, really that's crazy. You, like, who really gave you, who gave you that. It was like, yes. I really like this right here. Mm-hmm. So, me. she... um. She did my C15, whole whole everything, like lights, decoration, food. She organized everything, and that was inspiring to me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, one day I want to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. But she taught us, she's teaching us how to cook. She was my cooking teacher in right. school, but she works events. So I, t- I told her, I'm like, um, I want to have my sweet 15, but I want you to organize it. Mm-hmm. Little did I know I was going to have a sweet 15 like that right. from her, my cooking teacher. So you... Went to school as a teenager in DR. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And mm-hmm. when did you come back? I came back probably like 2014. How old was you? I was, I don't know, probably like 17. Oh, okay. No, so. like, no, like 2014, I was probably like 16, 17. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So how long was you in DR for? I was in DR from when I was 13. What? So you was born out here. I was born out here. I okay. got sent to DR for. Oh, so you was being a little badass. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, we already know about that. All us New Yorkers, we know when. Not to call you an immigrant. But when, when they send when the immigrants when get immigrant sent families, back to the country, the kids is acting up. They send them back. Your ass is going deported. Right back. Deported. Go be with your grandmother on the island. But so guess you can what? See the real that was struggle. so beautiful. You become an Americanized. It's That's why so I said, beautiful. Yeah, what would you? What was your perception? My perception of life was so See, different. She was taking it. She was taking advantage. Mm-hmm. That's what that means. Was yeah, taking advantage I was going crazy. Out here. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of a lot of little niggas. That's why I said it was beautiful. That got sent mm-hmm. back home because they mother like nigga. You what the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing? You think you one of these niggas? Uh uh-uh. uh. You not. You about to go see what's up? Uh-huh. But no, it's not. It was nothing different. I learned a lot over there. It was a, we was outside. In DR, you, you outside. <laughs> I heard. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, it's, it's you know, there's a lot of movement going on. So, so you, tell us what's what's um your culture dishes. And my culture dishes, I would. What's the most culture dishes that you say that y'all make and that you make? Um, I love my base. I wouldn't say basic because it's not basic to us. It's mm-hmm. very much like a home dish. Um, our arroz con habichuela. What are there? Some you gotta explain that to the non. Oh, sorry. White rice mm-hmm. with some stew beans. Okay. With either some beef stew or and that's, some. That's the one that's made in two different pots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you, what do you mean the, the stew? The stew beans and then it's the white rice and then you got the yeah yeah. So you know the arroz con dulas. Arroz con dulas is that's one pot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Arroz con dulas that's, that's that like. yellow rice. I love my arroz con dulas. That's the shit I like. Mm-hmm. That's what I made for my catering in Miami. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I had a little coconut in it, so it was coconut con gandules. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, I gotta see about that. Mm-hmm. And what else? Tell us some more. Um, so I told you I'm really, really like I love my soups. Mm-hmm. So I'm big on sancocho. Sancocho is you know um, I like that. What? I you like have you tried it? I don't like it. Have you tried it? I don't like how it looks. Mm, maybe because it's just a lot, but uh-huh. it's so good. I really think you should try it. Maybe if I, if I make it. Uh. I'm not big on like. Are you big on I, I soups? Try stuff. No, nah. No, I'm not a sicky person. You feel me? We was talking about healthy shit. I don't try. I don't like. It was. Soup it right was. Sick. It was 90 degrees the other day, and I went to the Dominican spot, and I went and got me a little soup. Yeah, I know. I'll be 90 degrees. When y'all do that shit. I was. It was hungry. It was early. I haven't had anything to eat, so I needed some soup. Thing first thing, a little broth in the stomach. Hmm. Is that why people be so thick? Nah, <laughs> that's what you wanted to say. Is that why you be so thick? <laughs> I'm just 
Actually, no. <laughs> you said a nice bra off in the stomach. It ain't nothing. No, else. but no it is healthy to start stick. like, you know, to you know, like drink no some broth. Stick to you, so. No, a little chicken bro, a little soup, you know. It's good for you. And they have all your veggies in there mm. mixed up. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> so, we going to keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> what do you perceive? What do you perceive to be your biggest challenges with starting your catering company? So you started in January. Yeah. Yeah, basically that just renovating my kitchen, um, generating content, um, and just getting into that getting into that zone. Like I'm a business owner now. Like mm-hmm. I really have to get into that mode, you know? Like this is mine. This is I'm not I have to really take ownership in my stuff. Have you thought about like the, your budgeting and all, everything. Oh yeah, and it's big, Fine. big, do big you on have budgeting. To budget differently every event, or is it a certain of like this is what I do every time? Um, Cause I want to make this much every time, like or if it's okay, they want this amount of. No, food no, no, it can't be like it's a that. Small event. It, I'm not gonna make the same money every time because it's not the same work every time. Mm. I'm not cooking the same thing every time. So, but I'm course, saying like as in. You all right? So then it's a full price for them. It's not even just we selling plates because I'm. Yeah, yeah. It would be like, for example, if it's a party of fifty and up. I would mm-hmm. charge you per person per plate, and if I will throw something in there, it would be extras. But like. Because yeah. you know how some people they will have food at events, but the person that they brought as the caterer, they're they're charging either ten dollars a plate for mm-hmm. whatever the food is. It don't matter if you. Got the chicken, got the yams. Yeah, exactly. But they're the... charging for that person for their seat. Okay, okay. Yeah. So then that's just, all right, so mm-hmm. $10, everybody, you planning on that, and that's yeah. the budget from there for Let's the say, yeah. That's, mm-hmm. So is it you you paying out of pocket for your food, or you telling the people, nah, Oh, no. Like, let's I'm say um, for big parties, food is in budget. So I would give you a quote for, you know, whatever it was spent on food and labor and, all, and everything. Okay, you do desserts and everything? I haven't really been a baker, but I'm trying to get up on that as well. Mm-hmm. So it's just mainly yeah, just, just cooking. full course meal, yeah. appetizing and everything. But I have worked with bakers, so I have a few friends that they come and they help me out. So we've been doing some like no-bake cheesecake. Okay, so you collab. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So we've been doing like no-bake cheesecake, um, tres leches, and I've been learning from them. So then, you know, you know I can work on myself. <laughs> So you just plan on always just doing events, or do you plan on having your own little space and people could come? Um, I would love to. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> if if um things go how they're supposed to, I would love to have a catering space where I can have a space where people can come and have their event. I can have a kitchen in the back, serve their food. Mm. You know? Never thought about having your own restaurant. I did, but restaurants crash and burn yes, easily. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yes, they do in the first two years. Yes, thank you for knowing that. Right. Yeah. Now, that's because I wanted to always not have a restaurant, but do something in that ballpark. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And I had to look it up. And one of my, sh- I ain't gonna lie, I always would love watching Bar Rescue. Mm-hmm. You ever heard of that show? Right. That show is a, um, it's a show that. When that is so somebody comes in, yeah, come and restaurant clean sucks, we're going to fix it up. You getting a D, you turn your bitch into mm-hmm. an A. That and guy that doesn't work, he's getting out of here. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they renovate the whole spot, but they give the whole ins and outs, and they show how much you actually need for this type of business as a whole. Like yeah. Like your whole um, overhead, mm-hmm. what everything you need from your employees to what the bars whole infrastructure. like. The whole infrastructure. So. That right there is very big, so I used to look into that, you know, creating my business plan from there. That's fire. You know, but meeting chefs, that's that's big important. So Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, before we get out, before we end this conversation, what as your background, like you said, you grew up in the Bronx, what high school you went to? You said in DR. I didn't go to high school here, yeah. I went to high school in DR. But then mm-hmm. I dropped out over there and, and I came over here Cal- and I got my GED. <laughs> okay. And you went to culinary school here. What culinary school you went to? I went to CTC, Culinary Tech Center, okay. down on thirty fourth Street. It's still here? Yeah, I think it's still open. It should be. Okay. Very good people out there. I so recommend. What would you as you being how old you are? I'm twenty seven now. You twenty seven right now. Before we get out of here, what would you tell a young person in their Young teens, 15, 16. Like you said, you was kind of wilding out as yourself. Mm-hmm. You had to be sent back to DR. What would you tell a hey, young person? Hey, not too much on me now. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you got, to, 
You had to hit your head a couple times. Get Jesus. right. Jesus. <laughs> what I would tell. We all, we all had to hit our head a couple times. We all live in a trench. Yeah. Country. That's why it's called morals and money, though. Hello. We have, to bring it to, <laughs> we have to bring it to where the kids understand. Like, yeah. you feel me? We're going to make Learn your lessons. trials and tribulations. We're going to go through life. You feel me? As a team. Yeah. But we got to figure it out in our 20s somehow. Cause mm-hmm. about time we got to figure it out early. We can't do it too late. Because if you figure it out too late, mm-hmm. you're going to be asked out. You're still doing trial and tribulations in right. 40? No. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of people that are, but yeah. like I said, what would you tell a young person? Um, Stay focused. Mm-hmm. Um, Try to stay in your lane. Know what you want to do. And even if you don't know, um, try to do your best to just stay to yourself and figure it out. Because figure it out too late is going to be too late. And what do you say when you can't say it's too late? It's never too late. Right. Yeah, it's it's, it's too not late. never too late, yeah. but it is kind of. Yeah, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Uh, they still. Can you can't be forty. Out. You can't be forty trying to figure it out, kid. Do it early. Are oh, you gonna be an old bozo? No, don't be an old bozo. That's what I'm saying. You can't be thirty trying. To, no. How many old bozos you know? A lot. That's what I'm saying. That's a lot. We a lot. I mean, they fucked it up for our generation. We. Fucked That's it up what I'm saying. Them. We fucking them for them. No, we gotta teach these kids early. No, dude. I like the Gen Z. Gen Z doing it right. Yeah. Some of them. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of them that I know. See? Feel me? Because when they listen, they take heed to shit that motherfuckers tell you. Yeah. Because we done did it. We got to teach these kids to eat right. Yeah. Yeah. Eat right. And what you out, eat is you what know, you, yeah. Gym, yeah. That's home. Work out. Run, you work out? Walk. Definitely. It look right. Mm. I try. You try? <laughs> That's what it looks like. It looks like you try. <laughs> All right, as long as it looks like I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm trying, I'm progressing. Okay. <laughs> you, right? you No. You need to get to it then. No, we need, let's go together. Right, let's yeah. try. Don't, don't play around. <laughs> yeah. I'm hold you to that. Okay. Right. Jim, you got the membership? That's a fact. All right. Bring <laughs> you could bring people? I could bring everybody. <laughs> Where we going? Everybody. Blink? Tomorrow. Blink? Yes. Okay. All right. Say that. <laughs> and just like that, morals and money, you know what's going on. I got the beautiful... Miss Chef Denise next to me. Bye, guys. Like I told good. y'all, we got another <laughs> segment coming to y'all real soon. You heard? Real, real soon. Keep it locked in. Keep tuning in. Keep supporting. You heard? Moles and money. We out.